Welcome back to the Saturday Show, 97.5 DKSL Sports Zone. I'm Christian Esparza, joined by Alex Napolis, as always. Starting your weekend off right. Starting get the some week- sports. Starting the weekend off the best way. Get some sports in, get some college football in, and uh, take a look at some of the local teams and see what they're up to. Yes, sir. Michigan right now, they are up 7-3 to three over number 2 Ohio State. The second quarter just started there. Uh, number eight Tennessee. They trail Vanderbilt seventeen to seven. Twelve minutes to go in that second quarter. Another big one to keep an eye on. Number fifteen South Carolina at number twelve Clemson. Those teams are tied seven to seven. Five forty four left in the second quarter. But Alex, I want to talk about BYU. Huge game for the Cougars tonight. They play Houston. They host Houston for the for BYU's senior night. Uh, it's a incredibly exciting night game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And with the win here, plus a little outside help, the Cougars will be in the Big 12 championship. How do you feel about this one? I think first and foremost, BYU has to go out there and take care of business. Right. They, I think, offensively have struggled over the course of the last couple weeks, specifically in that Kansas game, specifically last week against Arizona State. Looked much better in the second half. I will give them that. But you got to go out there and first and foremost, take care of your own business. The good thing for BYU is you will, you'll kind of have an idea of where you stand once your game starts. Because you got Arizona State taking on Arizona at 130. And then you have Iowa State taking on Kansas State at 530. Everybody knows, but just to reiterate, the outside help that BYU needs is a loss from either Iowa State or Arizona State. So BYU fans are going to want to be watching uh, Kansas State and Iowa State. That game is a 5.30 kickoff. They'll also want to watch Arizona State at Arizona. That's a 1.30 kickoff. So you need one of those two teams to lose, plus a BYU win, in order to make the Big 12 title game. It's a big ask. I'd put it at about a coin flip's chance, to be honest with you. I do expect... And I think BYU will take care of their business, right? If you lose to Houston at home, you probably you don't, don't deserve. You to probably don't game. deserve to make it to the game, or be in a Big Twelve championship game. Uh, so you have to kind of re- yes. At this point, you're relying on Arizona State, who I think surprise have been really good this year, uh, and have shown really really good moments. And you got to rely on Iowa State and Kansas State, which that one is kind of a, a, a coin toss for me. I don't know which way to lean in that one. No, and I, I don't know how good Iowa State truly is. I mean, Utah almost beat them last week with, with Ferrari, Batari, right? They were a 54-yard field goal away from winning that game. So Iowa State is very vulnerable. And then, of course, the Arizona State-Arizona uh, game is a rivalry game, which we saw with our own rivalry game here. Yeah. That can go either way. So it, it truly is going to be kind of a nail-biting afternoon for BYU and its fans, but the saving grace is that no matter what happens, I mean, tonight being senior night is incredibly special for this specific team just because of all the adversity that they've gone through. Uh, with After how last season went, their first year in the Big 12, finally leaving Independence, they get into a Power 4 conference, and they were massively disappointing. And then this year they were expected to be mid, middle of the pack, and they went on the the nine-game winning streak. And it is unfortunate that they had control of their own destiny, as some people like to say. It's kind of an oxymoron there, but they that is the reality. Like They, they had the world in their hands, and they blew it. But they yeah. still have a chance to, to get back to that title game. Um, but, man, these seniors, big night for them. Excited to, to see them play their hearts out because you know that they're all going to come to play tonight. Honestly, I think win or, win or lose, make it to the Big 12 championship game or not, this, uh, this senior class, this BYU team in general, just has a lot to be, a lot to be proud of. It's obviously going to suck if they lose. It's going to suck if they don't make it to that Big 12 championship game, but I don't think they should be walking out with their heads hanging low. I think they should be walking out there with their heads high because, <laughs> like you mentioned, I don't think anybody expected them to be in this position at this point of the season. No. We we even thought no. we thought it was going to be uh, they were going to be fighting for ball eligibility. Right. 
And for them to to start the season nine and zero, for them to be kind of leading the pack here in the Big Twelve after the disappointment of last year, they should absolutely be walking out of there with the with their heads held high, no matter what happens tonight. Twenty seniors being honored tonight. A lot of big names. A lot of the biggest names on this roster are included in that group. You got players like Isaiah Banya, Tyler Batty. Uh, they are going to honor Gary Bohannon, which is cool. Uh, Caleb Etienne, the left tackle, Keanu Hill, Darius Lassiter, Blake Mangelson, John Nelson, Connor Pay, Jacob Robinson, Hinkley Rapati. Like a lot of the key contributors for this BYU team are going to be on your, honored tonight on senior night. And Alex, that is kind of why I really like their chances tonight. I mean, you have a, a game in a situation where they need a win. They need a win to make the Big 12 title game, and it is a, a very emotional and special night at home at Lavelle Edwards Stadium at night. I would be absolutely shocked if BYU fell flat on their face and they were not able to beat the Houston Cougars. If BYU ends the season losing three straight, it is a, it is a little bit of a disappointment. Oh, it's a massive disappointment. It is, it is Because, it is again, they had everything in their hands. Absolutely. They had controlled their destiny, and then, uh, again, I like their odds. At Lee, like you mentioned, Lavelle Edwards, at night, it's senior night. They know it's a must win. I I don't think, you know, I don't think they'll, they'll end up falling uh, against Houston, but they have to figure out the the offense, they have to figure out the red zone, and they have to, I think the defense is playing well enough that I'm not really concerned about the defensive side of the ball. but Especially against Houston. Especially against Houston, which, I mean, Houston, they've looked a little bit better over the course of the last couple of weeks, but still not at a point where I'm concerned that they're going to walk into Lavelle Edwards in Provo at home at night and, yeah. and walk away with the win. No, I think the biggest key is going just back to Jake Retzloff. Two interceptions last week against Arizona State. You can't do that. At this point in the season with this much at stake, you can't do that. Um, 297 yards through the air and one touchdown. Like, that's all right. Uh, They did not crack 100 rushing yards. Got to have more than that as well. So really, again, just looking at the offense who, like you said, against Kansas, put up a stinker as well and then even against Utah. So really... November 9th was the Utah game, right? So it's been nearly a month of this BYU offense kind of just not being productive anymore after we saw some big games, you know, 41 points against Arizona, 38 points against Oklahoma State, 37 points against UCF. But then you get to the Utah game, 22 points, 13 points against Kansas, and 23 points against Arizona State. So there are some issues with this offense, and I, I don't know if you know defensive coaches have really figured out how to stop these guys, if that's it, or if, if, I, I, I don't know the answer. But regardless, I know the problem, and that is this offense is not getting it done. You got to score. You got to score pl- points. Plain and simple. That's how you win games. Who would have thought? Wow. <laughs> the, the offense, as you mentioned, has taken a fall off, and I would like to see them go back to the offense that we saw, you know, against UCF, back to the offense we saw even against Baylor. They had a, a phenomenal game against Baylor, and so that's going to be the key. That's the key for me, and it's Retzlaff, of course, taking care of the ball. You had the interception uh, to end the second quarter against Kansas that I thought really turned the tide in that game. You had the two interceptions last week. Second half BYU offense against ASU looked a lot better, played a lot better, and it's unfortunate that they were just uh, a little bit shy of, of potentially winning that one off of Hail Mary. Yeah, let's see what uh, Coach A-Rod can come up with to get these guys going. I'm sure he's going to have something special cooked up. Um, we'll, you know, Again, Hinkley Rapati being honored as a senior, maybe they'll try to get him heavily involved. Same thing with Darius Lassiter. Um, guys that have made plays for this team throughout the year, so we will see, but Man, what a crazy year it's been for the Big 12, right? I mean, to start off with, you've got a lot of the top dogs like Utah, Oklahoma State, and and Kansas for that matter. I know Kansas has been kind of a, a giant beater the last couple of weeks, but the record sucks. Like these are these are teams that were supposed to be contending for the title game and they just fell off. What's a bigger surprise to you, Christian? Oklahoma State at 0 and 9 in conference play? 
or Arizona State sitting at the top of the Big 12 right now? Oklahoma State, easily. They were in the title game last year, and they returned pretty much everybody. That's crazy. Pretty much everybody, and to not even win a conference game, I would say their their game against Colorado yesterday showed their true colors. They got whooped. Yes. 52-0. to That is a team that did not want to be out there. <laughs> no. That I mean... is a team that was done. <laughs> they have given up a long time ago. Yeah. And I think that is the perfect kind of representation of how their season has gone. Like, let's just get this thing over with. Let's move on. Let's be done with this season. And so that's a big decision. Is Mike Gundy going to get fired? Who knows what's going to happen there? Gundy, uh, everybody knows the story. Hired the same time as Kyle Whittingham, one of the longest tenured head coaches in college football. Will Oklahoma State be willing to say goodbye to him? Or are they going to let him have a chance to kind of rebuild this thing? But Ollie Gordon just completely falling off. I, who would have seen that coming? That was kind of crazy. I don't think anybody could have predicted that one. Uh, at, the, at them sitting 0-9. And like you mentioned, the fall off of Ollie Gordon. The guy was the Doak Walker winner last year. He was probably the best running back in college football. Yeah. And for him to just completely fall off the way that he did is is an anomaly. And I think I think should be... Should be studied. How? Why did Oklahoma State fall that far? But I also want to throw this at you, Christian. Kansas potentially messing up the Big 12 conference <laughs> chances at getting two teams in the playoffs. Yeah, it's tough. What's up with Kansas? Right. Um, there were thoughts. I mean, you look back to when BYU was still undefeated at that point, and people were saying, you know, with BYU being undefeated, if they— run the table and win the Big 12 title and they beat, say, Colorado, who everybody's eyes are on, the college football playoff committee would have to let both of those teams in, right? But uh, BYU and Colorado have since kind of blown things. And, you know, yeah, Kansas had a big part to play (laughs) in that. And then Colorado lost the game that they shouldn't have to Kansas as well. Yeah, you're right. So... It's hilarious because, again, Kansas was supposed to be one of these teams contending for the uh, Big 12 title, but maybe they forgot. (laughs) I don't know. They didn't turn it on until just a few weeks ago, and it's really weird that they were horrendous for three quarters of the season and then the last four games or whatever. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we can be good. We can play football. So that's a really weird story, but it is a bad look for the Big 12 ultimately. I mean... It's the first year of the 12-team playoff, and the SEC wants to get all their three lost teams in, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> they want to be represented, and the Big 12 wants to prove that they can hang with these other big conferences, and ultimately it is, it's is—it's bad for the conference to have so many teams kind of cannibalizing each other because realistically you've got BYU, Kansas State, Iowa State, Colorado, Arizona State, that could be, you know, sent to this playoff. And even Kansas, for that matter, over the last four games, I mean, that team, they're playing the best football in the Big 12 right now. So that's six teams out of 16 that could represent the conference, which it's it's good to have that many good teams, but it's not good to have it's not good to have a, a true top dog to represent you when you're trying to put eyes on you nationally as a conference. Definitely did not. I mean, I sat here two weeks ago and I told you we were on a collision course for BYU Colorado to play each other in the uh, Big 12 championship game. I 100% thought both BYU and Colorado were going to be in the conversation for the college football playoff. And then Kansas beat BYU, Kansas beats Colorado, and now we're in the situation where, oh, BYU might not even be able to make a championship game if things don't go their way today. It's crazy. It's it. If they miss out on the Big 12 title, it is going to be a disappointment. Even if, you know, people can point to, well, our expectations were only bowl eligible and look how far we come. Like when you go through a season and you win nine games straight to start things off and then you just fumble things away yeah. the way that they did, yeah. that's disappointing. That's It's a very half glass empty, half glass half full way to look at it. Right? Yeah. You can be positive about it. And you can say, hey, we weren't expected to be here. We weren't expected to do this. Or you can look at the glass half empty and say it's disappointing that they didn't make the right. championship game. Uh, but either either way, like I said, those those seniors, no matter what happens, got to hold their head. they got to hold their heads high because it's been 
a a good be a good season for BYU, a good bounce back season for BYU, considering what happened last year. To simplify things, Arizona State and BYU. Oh, no, sorry, I just butchered that. Arizona State and Iowa State will play in the Big Twelve title game if they both win today. Yes, BYU will take the spot of one of those teams should they lose. Colorado will find themselves in the Big 12 title game if two of those teams lose. So it, it is a wild day today for the Big 12. A lot of big games happening all day long. Checking in on Baylor and Kansas. By the way, Baylor is up 21-10. to 10. Um, there, There's still a way Baylor could make the Big 12 title game, by the way. Uh, <laughs> they need to beat Kansas, and then they need losses by all of Arizona State, Iowa State, and BYU and hold some tiebreaker and against hold Kansas some State. tiebreaker versus Kansas State. So <laughs> you're saying there's a chance <laughs> if Baylor makes if somehow some wild scenario plays out that Baylor ends up in the Big 12 championship game. We failed. Wow. That's crazy. People were calling for Dave Aranda's job at the beginning of the year. Oh, he should still be fired. <laughs> even if even if the scenario plays out that they end up making it. Yeah. I think uh, similar to the BY or to the Utah conversation to start off the show, like don't let little victories overshadow your major problems. Like, yeah, I guess you're right. I, and, guess, you're, I guess you're right. Uh, yeah, I'll I, give you that. But one. that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> Again, to reiterate, 1:30 p.m. Number 16 Arizona State at Arizona, and then 5:30 p.m. Number 24 Kansas State at number 18 Iowa State. Those are the two big games that really, really matter. For BYU tonight, and then of course BYU hosting Houston. Uh, that is at 8:15 tonight. So tune in; you won't want to miss it. We're gonna have the Cougar pregame show, by the way, at seven. So uh, tune into that as well. Let's take another quick break. On the other side, we'll hit a little bit of five minutes of. Got a couple more things I want to talk about on today's show. So stick with us. This is the Saturday Show, 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Welcome back. It is the Saturday show, 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Christian Esparza, Alex Napolis. Alex, let's hit a little bit of everything. I want to talk about NFL. I mean, those Thanksgiving games were pretty fun. They were very fun. Even the the debacle in the Chicago Bear game was fun to watch. It so. was fun to watch an all-time meltdown, yes. no doubt. And then, uh, oh man, yesterday's Chiefs-Raiders game. Okay. We okay. <laughs> oh, how, it's so frustrating. How do they keep getting away with it, Parker? No, that's ridiculous. I don't even want to look at Parker right now, but uh four games down already. A couple other big ones to go this week. Let's look at the Steelers and Bengals. Uh I think that's gonna be a low scoring game. It always is, but these AFC North matchups are so much fun because you truly never know who's going to win these. Absolutely. And just you know, I think the, the I mean there's a little bit of a rivalry there too, and so it's always fun to watch right. those games. It seems like there's there's a rivalry between all four of the teams. They all hate Absolutely. each other. Absolutely. Like it is some of the, the deepest run rivalries in the National Football League, and you never know how these games are going to go. Uh the Bengals are still technically alive in the AFC playoff race, but they practically need to win out. Yeah, pretty so much. So we'll see if the if the Steelers can spoil that. Uh the Steelers in their own right have been pretty good. Um eight and three, a little bit better than I thought they would be. Cincinnati at four and seven right now. I'm gonna throw this out there and because I, I want to get your thoughts. Your your thoughts on, on a thought that I had uh, about last week. If the Bengals were not four and seven at this moment, if they were seven and four, eight and three, whatever, if they just had a better record, is Joe Burrow in the MVP conversation. He's in the conversation. It's hard. So right now the MVP race is Lamar Jackson and Saquon Barkley, and that's it. Right. Um, I brought this up a couple weeks ago. I was asked if I thought Saquon Barkley would MVP would be MVP, and I said no, and I would still say no even after his nearly 300-yard performance um, simply due to the fact that he's still not matching what Christian McCaffrey did last year. And if Christian McCaffrey could not win MVP last year – in a, in a year where they basically just said, okay, I guess we'll give it to Lamar because nobody else did good, then Saquon's not going to win it this year because Lamar is playing even better than he did last year. But to answer your original question, 
Yes, 100%, because Joe Burrow, what he's doing this year is amazing, and it's a shame that his defense is horrible because they only have four wins. Four interceptions all year long with uh, 27 touchdowns. He's ridiculous. That is, that is I think, about the pace where Lamar Jackson was last year when he won. Right. So, unfortunate for Joe, I I think that, if, like I said, if there wasn't four and seven, he would be my front runner. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you there. I do think Joe Burrow is playing out of his mind. Um, but some other big matchups aside from that one, I think Cardinals-Vikings is going to be really fun. The Vikings have been a little up and down after starting off the season hot. Uh, we'll see if they get Justin Jefferson more involved. He was kind of shut down last week. But uh, And then Rams at Saints. The Rams should be able to win that one, right? I, I would hope so. The Saints are really banged up. Yes. And they're not that good to begin with. Not Yes, not very good defensively. And so I would like, if I think Matthew Stafford, yes, I mean, last week they got a little bit beat down by the Eagles. But, I mean, the Eagles right now are on fire. But the Rams are healthier and are playing better. So I would like to see them win against the Saints. Speaking of the Eagles and Lamar Jackson, for that matter, Eagles at Ravens tomorrow afternoon, 225 Alex, maybe whoever wins this game will take home the MVP trophy, right? Between Lamar and Saquon. <laughs> Saquon That's has how it been, should be. Saquon has been on a tear yeah. the last month. Uh, Lamar Jackson started off really hot. I think the Ravens are the best team in the league right now. Um, they are so good. They are so good. But I, I think this is going to be a great game because the Eagles have really turned it on as of late. So I think that's going to be a fun one and maybe a Dark Horse Super Bowl matchup as well. I'm still not over the backwards hurdle from from oh Saquon. Anytime I see that video pop up on social media, I have to watch it. Because well, I love all the high school players so trying incredible. to imitate it, and they get folded in half. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Don't kids. try it at home. Uh, 49ers, Bills, Sunday night football. I think that's going to be a fun game. I know the 49ers have kind of fallen short of expectations this year, but they have the potential to really be exciting when it matters. And I love primetime games because it seems like – Especially this year, teams have really been showing up for primetime games. I can't think of one off the top of my head that's been a dud. And I know there probably has been, but uh, Sunday Night Football is always fun to watch. I think the Niners at this point are probably also one of those teams where you they got to win out if, if they want a, a shot to make it into the playoffs, right? Yeah. Banged up pretty much all season, fallen short of expectations. The, the Bills... The one team that has been able to beat the Chiefs all season the long. The one team. The one team. And so they'll, of course, want to carry that momentum, but the 49ers need to win out if they want to uh, potentially make it to the playoffs. And if they don't make it to the playoffs, I think that's an astronomical failure. Brock Purdy missed last week uh, with a shoulder injury. Uh, the Bills were on bye, so coming out of a bye, they'll probably be pretty good doing that. Uh, teams, most of the time, you know, having the extra week to prep. They come out on fire. Josh Allen just got engaged, so congrats to him. To Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld yeah. and Josh Allen, uh, celebrity powerhouse couple. They kind of keep it quiet, really. They do, yes. Yeah, they don't really make a lot of noise in the media. And then Monday Night Football, the Broncos and the Browns. Um, the Browns had such a fun snow game a couple of Thursday nights ago. They can be fun. And I really like Jameis Winston. <laughs> how we'll, can you not like? How yeah. can you not not like Jameis Winston? Bo Nix. That's all I have to say. Probably my front runner for rookie. I'm offensive glad that you say that, and I hope you're not just pandering to me. No, no, no. I, um, I mean that. Jaden Daniels started off hot. He's right. He's flattened. But over the last month, he has really teams have started to figure him out. Where conversely, Bo Nix started off really struggling the first two games. Yes. But, uh, I mean, he won rookie. I think he won Offensive Player of the Month. Not just rookie, but AFC Offensive Player of the Month. And uh, three weeks in a row, he's won Rookie of the Week. So, I mean, his his touchdown to turnover ratio is 20 to 2 over the last, I think, since week two or three. Right. Or something like that. So, he has really started to figure things out, and the, their offense has been humming. If you would have asked me three, maybe four weeks ago, I probably would have said Jaden Daniels. Yeah. But I feel like the Commanders have really had a come back down to earth moment. Yep. And the Broncos haven't. The Bron- it's at least a conversation now. Exactly. There you go. 
It's what a- else should we hit for five minutes of? Let's talk Utah State basketball. Seven and zero. Oh. They just won the the NIT tip off tournament. And if they're not nationally ranked last week, I'll be upset. <laughs> or next week. I yeah. think I think you and me probably had the same questions for Utah State basketball heading into the season. You lose Danny Sprinkle. You lose Great Osabor. And I, there was probably, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you share the sentiment, but I definitely had some questions heading into the season. But those have quickly kind of been answered. Right. Because Jared Calhoun has really taken over this team, and they're playing fun basketball. It is so much fun to watch. Mason Falslev has put up 25 or more points in three out of his last four. 28 points last night. And what was funny, actually, about the 28-point number is that uh, so his career high was 25 points, and he put that he hit 25 points uh, in two of his last four games, and he was not able to surpass. He he tied his career high a couple of times, but he wasn't able to break it. But then finally, yesterday on Black Friday. He really leads his team to victory against North Texas in a game that really shouldn't have been that close. Ian Martinez was playing uh, sick, the rumor was, so he wasn't 100%, but, man, Falstaff put the team on his back and led those guys to victory. I think the most impressive thing is you look at that Thanksgiving game, you look at yesterday's game, those first halves, they struggled. Yeah. They were not shooting the ball well. They It was they, I don't think they passed 30 in either of those first halves, the 30 points in either of those first halves uh, in the NIT tip-off tournament. But the thing that I'm most impressed with is their ability to come back in the second half, erase that first half, and just basically start from zero and build off of a couple of good baskets to start off the half and continue to build that lead as the half goes on. That uh, that ability to come out at the from the halftime break trailing – and really take control of that game in the second half, I think that's probably what impressed me the most about that Utah State team uh, over the course of this NIT tip-off tournament. Over their last 200 games, Utah State basketball has a record of 153-47. and 47. Wow. And that's with four different head coaches. That That's impressive. That's insane. That is incredibly impressive. So, uh, yeah, Craig Smith, Ryan Odom, Danny Sprinkle, and then now Jared Calhoun. Uh, this team is one of the top mid-major programs in the country, and I would expect them to be playing in late March again this year. Absolutely, and that's probably, I think that's obviously kind of the goal, especially when you start off seven and seven and zero, right? Yeah, you you start Mountain play, uh, Mountain West play next week against Wyoming. You hope to get get off on the right foot, get that win against Wyoming, and just continue to build off those wins. We'll see how long this streak will go. I don't think. It's gonna. I'm, I'm, I don't know if it'll go in deep into March, but it's fun to see them win and and have this fun streak to start this season. What I'm curious to see is if they can beat Nevada this year. Nevada's also off to a good start. Nevada is also off to a very good start. December 31st, the Aggies travel to Reno to play Nevada. And that has been the thorn in their side the last couple of years. Uh, Nevada is ranked higher than Utah State in the Ken Palm rankings right now. I don't remember the exact numbers, but they were a few spots higher. So let's see if the Aggies can uh, beat the Wolf Pack. That's that's what I want this year. But anyways, uh, next Wednesday is when the Aggies return to action. That is at home against Wyoming. Alex, let's finish up this segment talking about the Heisman Trophy. This is a very controversial topic. I want to know who you have as your Heisman winner if the season ended today. If the season ended today, if the votes were due tonight, right now, it would be Travis Hunter. Okay. And I I I really wanted to be Ashton Genty because I thought I think he's had an incredible and phenomenal season. But I can't ignore the fact that Travis Hunter is playing elite ball on both sides of the ball. Right. Not just on offense, but you're also doing it on defense as well. And so the interesting thing about that is some people are like, okay, well, he's not the best corner or the best receiver, so why should he be Heisman? When that's a pretty ignorant take because the fact of the matter is, Alex, he's a top five corner and maybe a top ten receiver. If he were playing either of those positions just by themselves, he'd be a day one or day two draft pick, no doubt. But in this case where he's able to bring you both – it's pretty hard to argue against that. 
Absolutely. And, and I, I truly feel bad for Ashton Ginty because he is having a record-breaking season. But being at Boise State, the odds were always against him. Which and that's unfortunate. I kind of I wish they would just, you know, I I feel like people look at that and they're like, oh, it's the Mountain West. You know, anybody could do that. But right, he's having a, a like you said a record breaking season. It's been phenomenal watching him, uh, and him and Boise State. But I can't ignore a three touchdown performance from Travis Hunter last night no. against Oklahoma State. And that's hard because then you get into the whole stat padding argument, right? Like there were games where Ashton Ginty sat out basically the fourth quarter or the entire second half so he doesn't get hurt, right? And then yesterday afternoon you have Travis Hunter getting touchdowns late in the game to to pad his stats. So that's tough because yeah, if you know, if Ashton Ginty were to play 100% of the offensive snaps, how much better was would his stats look? Would that make a difference? I don't know, but I think they should both win the Heisman. <laughs> Can they do a co-Heisman <laughs> trophy? I'm too nice to pick one over the other. I think they both deserve it. They, they're both doing things that we've never seen before. Right. And that's that's what it boils down to, right? Absolutely. And it, it's about the records. It's about ha- coming out and having these phenomenal performances. And and. Yeah, I think it's perfect timing too because there's not really Heisman. The I feel like the Heisman Trophy has always favored the quarterbacks. Right, and that's another big point is that neither of these guys are a quarterback. There you go. And this year's quarterbacks, it's perfect timing because this year's quarterbacks. I don't feel like there is one quarterback that truly stands out as this is the guy. Right. Last, Cam Ward and Shador Sanders are the top two quarterbacks, and neither of them are phenomenal. And especially, I mean, Cam Ward over the course of the last couple of weeks has really fallen, not really fallen off, but I mean, just in the in the the view of the Heisman has fallen off for me, and so it's it's perfect timing because there's not the guy at quarterback this year in college football. I don't feel like, and so it's perfect. It's a perfect chance for a guy like Genty. It's a perfect chance for a guy like Travis Hunter who aren't quarterbacks to step up this season and and potentially win that Heisman. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know how much bowl games and the college football playoff are going to change things when it comes down to this. Um, but we'll see. Maybe maybe the Broncos will make the playoff and Ashton Ginty will go on a generational run and that will sway voters. But uh, we'll see. I'd like to see that. Again, just because I I, I, I want to see him win it. I think it would be super cool for, for a guy in, a, in the Mountain West Conference to take the Heisman. Oh, I was totally wrong. Scratch that. <laughs> they announced the Heisman uh, 8 p.m. on December 14th. There you go. So that's well before the playoff. But uh, so, yeah, and that changes everything. It is going to be Travis Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hey, what if Gen T has like a, a really great Mountain West Conference game? He could, yeah. Maybe he puts up 350 yards yeah, and six touchdowns. Go. I think it would take that at the bare, <laughs> bare minimum. And just to rub it in, put him in at linebacker. <laughs> have, have him, uh, Ray Lewis, some people while yeah. he's out there. Yeah, there you go. Ah oh, man, there you I go. hope he. I think he's gonna have a great NFL career, though. I really do. Yes, whoever picks, I think whoever picks him up is gonna have uh, is gonna be extremely lucky to have a guy like Genty. I think he he has all the traits to be uh, a solid running back in the NFL for years to come. We'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, Boise State and maybe UNLV in the Mountain West Championship. We'll see how things go later today. But it's time for another break, Alex. We'll wrap things up on the other side. This is the Saturday Show 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. It is the Saturday Show 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Krishna Sparza, Alex Napolis, wrapping up the show. Baylor has a 21-10 lead over Kansas. Looks like the Jayhawks are not going to spoil another team's chances at the Big 12 title game. Which I got a little bit of a, I got a little bit of a gripe with that, right? With Baylor, with uh, with that with Kansas. Okay, you go and you beat yeah BYU. You go and you beat Colorado. You potentially mess up the Big 12's chances to get two teams into the college football playoff, and you can't even beat Baylor to get bowl You're eligible. You're not even bowl eligible. Oh, what my was gosh. all what was all that for? You know? Yeah. No, I'm with you there. <laughs> ruining things for everybody yeah. thanks Kansas this is why we can't have nice things Kansas 
All right, Alex, I want to wrap things up doing some score predictions. We had game day up on the TV, and every single one of them picked BYU to beat Houston. How are you feeling about this one for the Cougs tonight? I think, again, perfect opportunity for BYU to get back on track. Perfect opportunity for them to come out with a little bit more spark on offense and just a little bit more fight, a little bit more fight on offense. That's something that's really been lacking over the course of the last two weeks. You just can't come out flat. If you don't come out flat and you play your game, I think you obviously at home you got a really, really good chance. I'm going I'm going twenty eight to fourteen mm. over Houston. Okay. I'm going similar to that. I'm going thirty one ten. Okay. Houston's offense stinks. And maybe things will look different with the new offensive coordinator. I'd be surprised if they score two touchdowns at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. But I'm with you there as far as BYU's offense. I think I think they figured things out. I think they come out really putting an emphasis on scoring touchdowns. So I am looking for a big day from BYU's offense. So, again, they kick off at 8.15. It's probably going to get slid back if we know anything about how that goes. But usually does. we're going to have your pregame show here on The Zone. That will start at 7.00. And the pregame show is actually going to be on 102.7 HD2, but it, it'll also be on streaming if you don't have an HD radio. To wrap things up, uh, some other things we have going on at the station today, we're going to have Jazz pregame at 6.30 before a 7.30 tip-off at home versus Dallas. And then the Utah Hockey Club playing at the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, that pregame is going to be at 7, and the puck drops at 8.00. Utah Hockey Club coming off a 4-3 overtime loss last night against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Good start. I, be- I believe they were up after the first quarter. Oilers got back into it. Hopefully they can get back off to a hot start against Vegas and can hopefully hold on to the lead this time, right? They they need some wins. Need to pick up, string up some wins. Yeah, and, you know, Vegas is a tough place to play. One of the best uh, home ices in the NHL, but Utah was able to keep it close last time, so... Maybe they'll go to overtime again today. But uh, that does it for us. For uh, Parker Behind the Glass, for Alex, I'm Christian. This is the Saturday show, 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone.